Hi everyone, so I wanted to show you today how I turned this baby doll into a little blue demon baby doll called Lucas. So first of all, I had to play with these cabochons. I was trying to work out how I was going to put the eyes on the doll. Um, I decided to put them on the surface of the doll and build up around the um, top. Because originally I was going to put the eyes on the inside, which is why I cut up in the back of the doll. Um, but instead I decided to sculpt over the top. So first of all I just needed to tidy up the doll's head. There was a lot of um, like flashing on the neck when I removed the uh, head from the body. Then obviously because the head's quite squishy um, I needed to actually make it a bit more rigid for when I used my epoxy sculpt. So I stuffed the head full of foil. Um, and this made it so it was a lot firmer surface to work on and also the head's less likely to squish which would eventually cause some of the um, epoxy sculpt to pop off. So I made sure that the head was well packed so it was nice and firm like so. And you don't want to over pack the head you don't want to actually like ruin the shape but you do need plenty of support on the inside um, just to make sure that when you're sculpting it doesn't get squished and then I glued the pieces of the head back on with some hot glue and squirted plenty of hot glue underneath as well to make sure that the back piece was going to stay in place. Later on this doll's going to have a hat on so it's fine um, I'm not too worried about the back of the head I could always put a little hat on and then um, put some hair or something at the back to cover up the lower part of the head so there's ways and means of covering it so I wasn't too worried about that and I made sure there was some uh, foil in the neck as well and then where I'd cut out uh, the forehead and remove the eyes I put some hot glue in there just to fill up that cavity before sticking the cabochons on the outside of the doll if I'd have realised at the start that um, I was just going to stick the cabochons on the outside and then sculpt with epoxy sculpt over the top, I wouldn't have bothered um, removing the old eyes, but never mind. So I chose these sort of fiery looking ones. I like these ones and I think these ones make quite good demon eyes. And I decided on three. Um, I just think it looks weirder, which is what I was going for and I'm just putting plenty of hot glue all around the, the eyes making sure there's no gaps just making sure they're really well glued into place and I'm going to sculpt over the top of all of this anyway so I wasn't too bothered about the, how the hot glue would look and then while I was waiting for the hot glue to set then I mixed uh, the two parts of the epoxy sculpt together it's worth doing this with gloves on because until it's mixed together it could be irritating to the skin. It's like quite drying to the skin. Um, I found that after it's um, blended together it seems to be fine but you just I, I do keep um, wetting my hands as I use this when I smooth down the clay anyway. And you need to make sure that you mix the two parts together for a good minute um, just to make sure it's all really well mixed. Otherwise you can have sections of the clay that set really well and sections that just don't. Um, so it's really good to mix and make sure it's all well blended together. Originally I was going to cover the whole face with epoxy sculpt and then cut out the eyes and sculpt into the eyes. Um, but I did change my mind about this part. As you can see here what I've done is actually removed all of that clay. Um, because I realised I couldn't get the detail in that I wanted um, so I just did this the, the way I would have done it before I don't know why I tried to do it different so here I'm rolling little snakes of clay and using those to make the um, upper and lower lids you need to make them bigger than I did so I took that one off and remade it and as you can see I'm just using that to create a rough upper and lower eyelid which will all get blended and worked worked in to make it actually look better but if you start off with the basic snakes of clay it's easy to build up from there 
and then got to blend all the edges in to make them as smooth as possible because you want to blend this as much in with the head of the doll as you can because the idea is if I can make those ends really thin once it's painted you won't be able to tell where the clay ends and the doll's head begins because I don't want to cover the entire head with clay because it's just a waste of epoxy sculpt so here what I'm doing is I'm smoothing down all the edges with my clay tool as much as I can and then using a baby wipe over my finger or a finger dipped in water to smooth the edges down to get them like minuscule so that it's like l less than half a millimeter thick and by doing that and adding the textures that I add later it actually blends it in with the doll's head you can see here any edges that I go over I just repeat that again and I do the exact same thing for all three eyes and I start off with the the lower two eyes because it's easier and I worked out when I did the first one it's easy to do the lower lid first and then put the top lid over the top and again blend all those edges in make sure it's nice and smooth just be careful not to um, blend too much of it in like you want that little sort of ridge of clay around the edge of the eye if you blend it in too much it's not going to look right because I do want it to look like the eyelid has some substance to it and obviously when you sculpt make sure the hot glue is dried um, that's attached to the eyes first otherwise the eyes will move What I like about these clay tools is I can get in those little um, nooks and crannies so I'd got like a tiny little hole that I needed to blend out there and by using the baby wipe I add a little bit of texture into the clay from the fabric as well which I quite liked and here I'm just reshaping the brows where they need reshaping and adding a bit of clay in the middle because I've got like a hole in the middle that was going to look weird and prevent me from being able to sculpt that around that later on so I just filled that in get it nice and smooth and then blend it in with the nose and then as you can see what I'm doing is just creating little wrinkles and grooves around the eyes using my clay tool and I've also added some clay to the tops of the ears to create little pointy ears and I've added two little clay teeth with the epoxy sculpt in the mouth because remember that what I'm making here is a baby demon so that's why it's only got a couple of little tiny baby teeth this is like um, a newborn baby demon basically so I'm just adding those little folds and creases imagining where um, like the skin would fold when the eyes are fully open and where the creases would be and most of the creases in skin tend to be the areas that like move and squish up the most so obviously I'm going to add extra uh, wrinkles in the corners and the forehead area And I've added, I had plenty of wrinkles above this eye at the top as well. Because obviously eyelids when they're open, they're all folded and scrunched up. They're only sort of more smoothed out as it were when they're closed. So here I'm just carrying on adding these little wrinkles and do this around. And I do this in the middle there as well. Just to make sure I get that bottom lid nice and wrinkly. And add a few wrinkles in between the three eyes just above the nose and then once I finished and I was quite happy with the wrinkles and everything that I created I then left the um, epoxy sculpt to set usually you leave it for 24 hours I actually left it for a few days just to make sure it was really set rock hard make sure there was no moisture left at all and it just makes my life easier when it comes to painting 
and also I didn't want to sort of start messing around with the doll's head if the epoxy sculpt wasn't sort of 100% set so I left it a little bit. I then painted the whole head black as a base coat. Uh, later on this is going to get like a layer of blue but I wanted the blue to be like quite dark and quite muted so I did a base coat of black first. This is mainly to blend the epoxy sculpt in with the skin of the doll because obviously the epoxy sculpt is like a bright white and then the skin of the doll is this pinky colour um, whereas if I so if I paint it all black I'm going to get the nice muted down blue that I want at the end um, but also everything's going to all blend in so the epoxy sculpt will be the exact same colour as the, um, the doll's skin and then a dry brush just so I can get like different tones into the skin and everything I dry brush white over the top and this went a bit weird at first because the brush was a bit damp um, but I did tone it down later on and like I said this is like the base layer so it doesn't have to be perfect I suppose really I could have just painted the doll's head grey really but the, having the black did make sure that it was all really well blended in and because it's a nice strong opaque colour it covered all the epoxy sculpt as well which is what I wanted and here I'm just twitching up any areas where too much of the uh, white went on and then if you're wondering with the eyes because they're glass um, it's dead easy to remove the paint afterwards you just use a little clay tool um, I'm using a metal one and all you do is you scrape off the paint off the eyes afterwards that's why I didn't worry too much about trying to avoid painting around the eyes when I did the paint job so as you can see it comes off quite easy it's just a case of sitting there and scratching it off for a bit if you've got a, like a sculpt with a lot of eyes it would take a while and would be quite tedious but because there's only three little eyes in this it's quite quick and easy and I left the head like that for now because I want to make sure that that layer has fully dried before I try to dry brush some blue over the top and the next thing I did was um, touch up the teeth so they would show and as you can see I've made them like baby teeth so they're not quite sharp and pointy like they would be normally for like a monster or creature because um, again these are his baby teeth and then I'm just touching up with some black in the nostrils and I also touched up with the black in some of the little creases and folds where I felt that the wrinkles didn't show up as much as I wanted so I just went over and darkened those and darkened the recesses around the nose just to make those details stand out a little bit more and it means that those dark areas will show up better when I do the blue over the top later on and then the next thing to do which is what I'm fiddling with off camera is to reattach the body now to take the head off the body in the first place it had got like um, a cable tie through the fabric which is what was holding the doll's head on and I took that off so what I'm doing here unfortunately which is off camera is just using a needle and threading a ribbon through the fabric so that I can tie that to reattach the head to the body because if you can see the like the little notch took out around the neck of the doll um, the ribbon go the ribbon and the fabric goes in that little section that's like um, inside the neck of the doll and that's what holds it on and then the wider part at the bottom of the neck um, stops the head popping off once the thread is tightened or the ribbon in this case so as you can see I'm just pulling that ribbon through and then it's just a case of popping the head back into position and then pulling and tying the ribbon to make sure the head stays on now obviously this doll would not be suitable for a child to play with because I can't guarantee the head wouldn't come off again and also with all the um, glass eyes and the paintwork it wouldn't be suitable so this is obviously for an adult collector and to use as Halloween decor 
Then I did the same base layer of black and grey on the arms and legs to match the head. And it's just a case of painting the arms and legs black and then dry brush, uh, drawing those off with a heat gun um, just very carefully so you don't melt the doll or anything and then dry brushing the grey over the top. Again this is so I can get that really nice muted blue colour that I want otherwise this baby doll would end up like bright blue and I didn't want the doll to be bright blue. So as you can see painted all over legs too. And then here I'm just drawing off the legs so I can do the dry brushing because I'm impatient. Um, you could just leave this to dry for a couple of hours um, although acrylic paint doesn't normally take that long if the room's warm but I wanted to finish this project because this has been hanging around on my desk for a bit. So I just used a heat gun. If you haven't got a heat gun you can use a hairdryer just don't hold the hairdryer or the heat gun too close to the doll because otherwise the paint can blister as well and obviously you don't want to melt the doll but it just speeds up the drawing process which means you can work on the next stage quicker and you could leave the doll this colour if you prefer the sort of stony colour effect um, that I've got here but I wanted to make mine blue so what I'm doing now is dry brushing blue over the top and anywhere where there's the, gr the light grey colour the blue will be brighter and anywhere where the black's showing through the blue will be darker and I'm just sort of stippling and dry brushing this blue on and as you can see the, the blue's quite muted like it's not really bright and in your face I felt the blue worked a bit better on the head. I think it's because I left the head longer to dry. And I'm just using dabbing motions and blending it in. And I did, I think I did two, two coats in the end, but quite thin. Basically just dry brush the two coats on. Um, the one arm I felt there's a bit too much white on it and it came a bit brighter than the other arm but I can always tone that down later with a bit more blue paint and then I felt that the baby needed some decorations so I added some little dots of white I imagine these to be like the markings of the demon baby or it could be like an alien baby maybe I just felt it needed something because it was a bit plain so I added these little little dots And I added little earrings in the ears, which I like to add. And I added some dots on the forearms too. And on the legs. And then um, what I did was painted the fingernails and toenails black. I had originally painted them black, but obviously going over them with the, the paint, I accidentally covered those up. So just touching those up here. And the same on the hands. And that's pretty much it. That's how I made Lucas the Demon Baby. Hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.